Shalom family and friends. Hope all is well. Another awesome lesson being brought to you today by Shabar Israel. S-H-A-B-A-R-I-S-R-A-E-L. You can check me out as well on Facebook and you can follow me on Twitter if you will. And last but not least, YouTube. And so um, the topic of discussion today, I'm going to go into how prayer is very powerful, is effective um, on the righteous behalf, and, and it moves mountains, it changes things, man. Prayer is very powerful. And so when you think of a, a praying character in the Bible, a man that did extremely praying, you know, King Hezekiah comes to mind, and I want to cover that. So I'm going to start in the book of uh, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, in the Old Testament, and uh, we will cover, is that 2 Kings? Yeah, we will cover 19 verse. You can take notes if you will. Now, however, I'm not going to read the whole entire chapter of 2 Kings. I'm just going to pinpoint, cherry pick the verses out of this chapter to show you guys, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans being the Israelites of today, that prayer can be very effective and powerful, man, especially dealing with your enemies. And so... Yeah, let's get into it. Before we get into it, let's give double honor to the elders, salutations to the brothers, and last but not least, all praises, glorification, do honor, the lords of lords, kings of kings, the beginning and the end, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. So, now, let's get on the ball. 2 Kings 19, chapter verse 1, and it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and he covered himself with sackcloth and he went into the house of the Lord. Now, what did King Hezekiah hear about? Well, um, basically what's going on, because I'm not going to cover the whole chapter. So let me go ahead and analyze it. Basically what's going on, if you look into um, 2 Kings um. 19 and um, let's look at 14 let's go down to 14 I'm going to browse through it right quick 2nd Kings 19 14 and Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it and Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. So we're gonna we're gonna actually start here. So Second Kings nineteen fourteen. Hezekiah received this letter of the hand of the messengers. Now what's going on is that the king of Assyria at that time, his name was um Sennacherib, and he was the king of Assyria at that time, and the king of Assyria, um, he already had destroyed the northern the northern part of Israel which consists of the northern ten tribes the Assyrian armies already had destroyed those northern ten tribes which is known as the house of Israel which today is the Latin tribe the Spanish tribes so the most high let this happen to the northern Israelites because these people were so bad you know they wasn't keeping the commandments and now this Assyrian, um, this Assyrian king, along with his Assyrian armies, armies have come to fight against the Jews, which was southern Israel. And so the king of Assyria had sent letters to King Hezekiah, um, and these letters that Hezekiah received, they was actually letters that was making fun of the God of Israel and telling Hezekiah and his man to just give it up because you're finished, you're done. We're coming for you, we're gonna kill you up, just give it up. So Hezekiah was very intimidated when he received these letters of the hand of the messengers 
that was sent um, by King Senator Rib. And when he read it, Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and he spread these uh, he spread these letters before the house of the Lord. Because he wanted the Lord, the Most High, the God of Israel, to also see these letters that the king Sennacherib of Assyria, along with his messengers, had sent Hezekiah. So 2 Kings 19, 15. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. And he said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. So this is Hezekiah prayer to the God of Israel. 2 Kings 19, 16. Lord, bow down thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, thy eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which have sent him to reproach the living God. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, had made fun of the living God by sending these messages and these letters to Hezekiah. Once again, he was telling Hezekiah that, look, man, your God can't save you. These, this, what these, this is what was on these uh, letters that Hezekiah received from his messengers, from, from senatorial messengers, saying, look, your God can't save you, man. You know what I'm saying? Give it up, Hezekiah. We about to take you and your man down. We are, you seen what happened to the, the ten tribes of northern Israel and then the other two tribes which was Judah and Benjamin, which consists of uh, the southern kingdom, he said, we coming for y'all too. You see what I'm saying? So Hezekiah laid these, these, these letters out and started praying before the Most High, man. Now, what is he praying about? He's praying to be delivered from the hand of his enemies because the Assyrians was trying to make their way in on southern Israel as well, the same way they did northern Israel. So Hezekiah was like, look, man, we, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm opening my heart, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm turning to you. So he prayed to the God of Israel in terms of deliverance. 2 Kings 19, 16. Lord, bow down thy ear and hear. Open, Lord, thy eyes and see and hear the words of Senator Real. Hear the words of this heathen king which have sent him to reproach the living God. 2 Kings 19, 17. Oh, a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands. Second Kings 19, 18, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of man's hands, wood and stones. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, listen what Hezekiah says. Second Kings 19, 19. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, the God of Israel, the God of, Yah the God of Israel, Yahweh, he said, now, therefore, uh, O Yahweh, our God, I beg you, basically I beseech you, I'm begging you, save thou us out of his hand. Man, save us out of the hand of King Sennacherib. Save us out of the Assyrian king hand. That all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahweh. God, even thou only. So what Hezekiah was doing, he was basically saying, please, I beg of you, hear this prayer. Save us from the hands of this heathen Assyrian king. Because you didn't save northern Israel when the Assyrians ambushed and invaded them. You didn't save northern Israel. You didn't save those ten tribes. So you have this southern kingdom, Israelite king of Judah, Hezekiah, praying to be delivered from the Assyrians. And prayer is very important, man, because if you have a righteous heart, the most I will hear your prayer, man. In fact, I want to go to James 5 and 16 as a precept. So let me go to James 5 and 16 as a precept in the New Testament. James 5 and 16. This is what it says. In James 5 and 16, and it reads, Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. And it also says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we know, going back to 2 Kings 19.19, 19, that King Hezekiah was a righteous man. You feel what I'm saying? 
King Hezekiah was a righteous man. Hezekiah was a good king. He was not like the bad, the other bad kings. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 of northern Israel, because northern Israel, all northern Israel kings was bad. The king Hezekiah was a good king. You know what I'm saying? King Hezekiah also, he had a father by the name of King Ahaz, and he was wicked as hell. King as a King Hezekiah father was wicked, but not King Hezekiah. You know what I'm saying? He was King Hezekiah was a good king that walked with God and kept his commandments. He was very careful in obeying the Most High's laws. You see. So after Hezekiah had finished praying, something very remarkable happened, and I'm going to show you this. So that's why we took you right here. To James 5 and 16 as a precept in the New Testament because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. If you're not righteous and you're wicked as hell, you can hang it up. Your prayers is not going to be sought after and they're not going to be, they're they not going to be answered, man. Now, I want to give you this too because when you pray, it's very important that, you, that your heart is right in terms of keeping these commandments. You know what I'm saying? Your heart has to be right. And keeping the commandments. Watch this. I want to show you something. This is Proverbs 28 and 9 as another precept. Because what if you decide to pray and your heart is not right with the Most High? You ain't keeping no commandments. Watch this. This is Proverbs um, 28 and 9. Because a lot of people want to want to understand, over enter and understand, like, why is my prayers are not being heard? Most of you Israelites out here, look. Proverbs 28 and 9. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers shall be an abomination. So you want your prayers to be answered. You want your prayers to be accepted. The petitions, the requests that you make, you want them to be accepted. Guess what? You got to be keeping the laws of the Heavenly Father as an Israelite, Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. Because if you turn away your ear from hearing the laws of Moses, basically from hearing the Torah, you turn away your, your ears from the law, your prayers is abominable. So you see you see the difference? You see what I'm saying? That's why we was covering in James 5 and 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. But if you're not righteous, you're not keeping the commandments. Guess what? Proverbs 28 and 9. You want to turn your ear away from the law of Moses, then your prayers is abominable, man. He's not going to hear him pretty much to say. He's not going to hear them out. You see what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, so uh, just remember that. Back to 2 Kings 19, 19. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech you, save us. King Hezekiah says, save the Jews. Southern Israel, save us out of the hands of this heathen king, King Sidajarib of Assyria. Second Kings 19 and 20. Now did the Most High, did he hearken to the prayers of Hezekiah? Let's see. Second Kings 19:20. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sidajarib, king of Assyria, I have heard. So you can see right there when King Hezekiah made this petition in terms of the Most High delivering the Jews from these Assyrians. What did Isaiah tell Hezekiah? Isaiah sends um, basically a message to the king from the Most High and tells him that his prayers have been heard. You get what I'm saying? So now let's cut a little bit more through this chapter and let's go to 32nd verse of 2nd Kings 19 so let's go down to the 32nd verse now listen therefore this is what Isaiah was telling um, uh, King Hezekiah therefore thus said the Lord concerning the king of Assyria which was King Sedatarel he shall not come into the city nor shoot an arrow there nor come come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. You see that? So when Hezekiah had made that prayer, 
remember when Hezekiah was saying, he said in um, 2 Kings 19, 2 Kings 19, 19, up here in 2 Kings 19, 19, he said what? He said, save us out of the hands of our enemies. Was it heard? Yes, it was heard. Why? Because King Hezekiah was a righteous king and he was keeping the law. And so, you know, the most I saw to it that he heard King Hezekiah's prayer by sending Isaiah to tell him that his prayers have been confirmed. Now, when you go down here to uh, the 32nd verse of 2 King 19, we can clearly see that God did work in Hezekiah's favor. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he saw to it that the Assyrian king did not come into his city, did not destroy it. He didn't shoot an arrow against the city. He didn't come before it with shield, nor did he cast a bank against it. See that? Uh, 2 Kings 19.33 By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, said the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Watch this, 2 Kings 19.34 For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake. And for my serv servant David's sake. So the king of Assyria did not come against Hezekiah and his men. So what did that tell you? Prayer changes things, man. You know, and the, a, a prayer uh, of a righteous man, it availed much, man. So this was the prayer of Hezekiah. He said, save us from King Zedazarib, this Assyrian army. And the most I saw to it that... You know, he he saved, you know, Hezekiah and his man, southern Israel, from this Assyrian army. Now, in verse 35, what happened to the Assyrian army? What happened to uh, these Assyrians? And it came to pass that that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred, four score, and five thousand men. Now, how many is that? 185,000 Assyrian soldiers were slain by the Lord, man. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, there were all dead carps. So it was 185,000 Assyrian carps slumped over because the angel of the Lord went out and killed just that many Assyrian soldiers, man. 2 Kings, verse 19, 36. So Senator Rehob, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. So the most I saw to it that, you know, the king of Assyria at that time being King Sita Jarrell, the most I shook him up and scared the hell out of him um, on the behalf of the prayer of Hezekiah, man, because the most I saw to it that 185,000 Assyrian soldiers were slaughtered, man, whether they was belly down or belly up, early that morning, there was all dead corpse, and this shook and scared the hell out of the king city to real of Assyria and he departed and he went the other way you get what I'm saying so man yes we should always pray uh, that the most I deliver us from our enemies man we should always be praying that we are delivered from this so-called white man today in America which are the Edomites we should be praying the same prayer because we can't do it we can try to take matters in our own hands but we can't do it personally we can't do it the God of Israel has to deliver us from our enemies. So you can see that uh, the Mosiah sent his angel. And in one night, the angel killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. So the king of Assyria, he gives up and he goes back home. And the southern kingdom, which consists of Benjamin and Judah, um, they were saved at that particular time. Um, and the people had peace for a while. But then we know later on, after Hezekiah dies, uh, he had a son named Manasseh, which was wicked as hell, and he and he had became king. And Manasseh and his son Amon, Amon, after him were very, very bad king, kings. And then the land was eventually filled with violence and crime again, you know. And then King Amon got murdered by his own servants. And so, you know, uh, so forth. But uh, just dealing with King Hezekiah, man, you can see that, yeah, we should be praying to be saved from our enemies. 
you know what I'm saying, that the king of Assyria will not come into Jerusalem, you know, which is the, the king of Assyria today is the so-called white man, the Edomites. We should be praying that they will not come and destroy us, man, and that, but that the Most High would deliver us from their hands. But anyways, yeah, man, another precept. This is um in the New Testament. What is this, like Luke 1 and 68, I believe. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 1 in the New Testament. I believe beginning with 68. Taking a rough stab. Luke 1 and 68 says, uh, yes, Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. His people is the blacks, Hispanics, and natives today, which are the Israelites. He redeemed his people. Let's see. Right here. Let's go down right here. Luke 1 and 7 and 1. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate them. So we should be praying that we should be saved from our enemies like Hezekiah was doing. Luke 1 and 7 and 1. But remember, man, if you ain't keeping the laws, that doing the commandments, your prayer pretty much is not going to pack any power. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments for your prayer to be eligible. You got to be doing what's right because, like, a lot of people want to know, like, I pray all the time, but I feel as though my prayer is not, I feel like my prayers are powerless. This could be a reason too. Um, let's go to First John. What is that? First John. Is it First John five and fourteen? Like I said, now I'm just trying to show you some things before I close out. First John five and fourteen. Let's check that out. First John five and fourteen. Let's see what that says. Check this out, man. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we got to ask according to his will. Now, what is, a, what is the Lord's will? The Lord's will, the Lord is willing that we keep his commandments as Israelites. You see, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we will ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So he only hears those who is doing his will. You know what I'm saying? Who is keeping Torah. Who's keeping the commandments. And if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You just can't ask of anything of the Most High if you ain't keeping the commandments and expect for him to, to hear him. And expect for him to hear you. You got to be doing his will, man. 1 John 5 and 15. And if, we, and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Okay. So uh, another one. First, what is that? Mark 11 and 22 in the New Testament. Mark chapter 11 verse 22. Mark 11 and 22. And Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Yahweh Shai answered, said unto him. Said unto them, Have faith in God. Mark 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, And be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things Which he said shall come to pass, He, he shall have whatsoever he says. So like I said, man, When you pray, You know, First and foremost, for your prayers to be heard, you got to be keeping the commandments. And then um, when you pray, you have to believe as though it's already done. And you and you can't have no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Because if you are praying, just don't doubt. You know what I'm saying? Don't doubt in your heart. That means your mind. The heart is the mind according to the scriptures. So don't doubt in your mind, but believe those things as, as, as they already have taken its course. And you know what I'm saying? And you should have whatsoever you say, you know. Matthew 11 and 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things 
So ever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when you pray, you got to believe that it's already done. Like when Hezekiah was praying that the Lord protect them and save them from, from the Assyrians, he already had visualized that it was already done. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't praying, you know, like, like the event hasn't already happened. King Hezekiah already had, you know, he already believed these things that like, save us from our enemies you know what i'm saying like save us from king said it's real and it's man and so when hezekiah was praying he already saw to it that it was done you know what i'm saying now you might have a blockage in your prayers a prayer blockage what what do i mean by that a prayer blockage is when you pray and your request is not answered you know what i'm saying like your requests when when you make them they not they not answer you feel as though like what's going on this could be right here concerning prayer blockage mark 11 and 25 and when you stand praying it says forgive if you if you have all any you know what I'm saying like if you got an issue against your brother against your sister you have to forgive your brothers and sisters that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses, of your sins. Matt, uh, uh, Mark 11 and 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And so that can be a prayer blockage. Because you can be seeking something, asking for something in prayer. And it may not be, it, 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 it may not be applied to you because you have this, this, this issue with your brother your sister that you haven't cleared up and so that can cause prayer blockages you know what i'm saying and so you may look across the street and you may be wondering like why is this brother and this sister across the street why is their prayers being just answered so quickly because that brother and that sister across the street they don't have no alt against any of their they don't have no no issues against their, their nation you know what i'm saying you might have an issue against a lot of people and then you having these issues, you haven't settled it. You haven't settled the issue against your brother and sisters, but yet instead you trying to pray on top of the issue. You gotta settle that issue between your brothers and your sisters, and then come back make and make your requests before the Most High, and you'll see that prayer blockage would be, you know, what I'm saying, unblocked. It's like a clog drain, you know what I'm saying. You gotta get the clog out of that drain, and that clog that's maybe blocking that drain is you having them issues with your brothers and sisters you know what i'm saying so yeah just going over some things man going over some things just pray about everything man you know what i'm saying philippians 4 and 6 like pray about everything man in the new testament philippians 4 and 6 wait a minute let's feel man let's go back to philippians philippians 4 and 6 Philippians is four and six. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So, man, you have anything on your heart you feel like you want to take to the Most High? You know what I'm saying? Anything on your heart you feel like you want to take? To the most high, you might have an issue, anything, you know what I'm saying? Never feel like you can't come to the God of Israel in prayer, man. Because man will fail you all the time, but we know the God of Israel, he's always willing to listen, hear you out, and negotiate. So, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, man. Like like Hezekiah, he King Hezekiah, he let his requests be made known because he was he was intimidated of the Assyrians coming in and destroying southern Israel. So he said, he said in 2 Kings 19, 19, he said, man, look, save us. You know what I'm saying? Save thou us out of his hand. And that was him, you let, that was King Hezekiah letting his quest be made known to God. But yeah, that's the, this is the end of this lesson, guys. What, it was not a very long lesson at all. But uh, yeah, share this video with family and friends. Until next time, shalom.